computer. Okay. So who's okay. who's done anything okay. astronomy wise lately? Well, I set uh, up a telescope to show everybody the hydrogen alpha sun and I didn't have the right dovetail plate to match it to my amount I was using. So that didn't work on Sunday. It didn't work out. Uh, no. uh, what 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 dovetail mount were you using on the scope? Well, I usually I I have a Vixen um, polar great Polaris, whatever it is, uh, mount. And uh, I used this, the sun telescope is so light that I used that on there. And I, I had set up my astrophysics AP 900. And um, that uses the Losman DD type dovetail plate. And the, the um, Vixen uses a much smaller dovetail plate. And I, I thought that the screws would line up so I could mount one on the other, but they don't. So I'm going to have to get out the old drill press and make it fit. <laughs> right. right. Uh, Good evening, Tim. Hello, Tim. Uh, hi. <laughs> Got a little vibrato effect on the voice so far. Last night I did a little outreach at El Capitan with my uh, our, our stepson, my stepson, and he had a little campground going there. So I pointed out the stars and constellations. So that was kind of fun. Uh huh. How old is he? He's forty-seven. This is okay. his birthday. Yeah. And got, at first I was picturing a toddler, but I didn't remember you had a grandson that young. So. I have a son, grand grandson. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, boy, and and, and I have yeah, an early start, <laughs> and, a, and a grandson, step grandson that is like he's probably thirty five or something like that. Okay. So uh, maybe not quite that. But. You guys started much earlier than I did. Yeah. Yesterday, Sunday was my birthday, and so I got this T-shirt from my grandson. That's a good one. Well, my weird. oldest, What's my that? oldest grandchild will turn. Uh, she's twenty nine. I can't believe that. Yeah, <laughs> boy, time goes so fast. Oh, all right. Yeah. I, I wanted to report to you guys about our observatory here. Okay, we got go a few minutes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, th this has turned out to be a one exciting thing that's happened here. Uh, and uh, I was writing Tom, I said, it, it's ending up being like a, a super outreach <laughs> for, for this community. Uh, so Why we had our fun drive. Is everybody showing up for it? Uh, listen, it, the enthusiasm here is amazing. Oh, okay. It is, it's amazing. Uh, so so uh, since I've talked about this last, we made, what happened is, uh, to bring you quickly up to date, <clears throat> we, we had a public announcement at the residence meeting earlier this month, followed by an hour long informational meeting the next week. So we, we had about 50 or 60 people come to the informational meeting. And so at that time, I went through what we're gonna be doing, kind of what we're gonna be able to see, how we're gonna be able to use this telescope in the observatory. So uh, we have had a fundraising process going even before this. So then I let the people know there that we were looking for money. So the final upshot is that the fundraising uh, drive has ended, but we, we ended up raising all the money we needed plus some. So we raised about uh, $14,600. And then we have an additional uh, almost $1,500 that's come in, which will go into a fund to help uh, continue it, you know, going and doing maintenance in terms of getting new stuff. So we have this backup fund and it just has, um, uh, 
Oops. Yeah. Wait. There we go. I can say it's Westminster. <laughs> Some of our residents. Uh, so. Um, so anyway, the the observatory will be here. The latest estimate is the first part of October. So we have all the money, and we have a great deal of interest. And so the next step is I'm trying to get a cadre of people together here who will work with me so that <laughs> I, this doesn't all fall on my shoulders to operate this. Uh -huh. And uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll have no trouble in getting a number of residents to do that. So, uh, and then I have a book that uh, I've asked them to read. If you want to help work the telescope, you got to read this book. You know, it's if you don't have to be any background in astronomy, you don't have the background in math, but you have to read this book <laughs> to get acquainted with some of the basic stuff of the, you know, the celestial sphere and how the telescope operates and some of the basic concepts in astronomy. So anyway, it's uh, very exciting. Uh, it's way gone, way beyond anything I thought would happen here. So uh, anyway, very, very, very gratifying to, to see this. Like yeah, yeah, it really is. I, I think the reason it's gotten people's attention is that it's something that that it astronomy you know gets people's interest and they know just enough about it with all the space programs and so on to know hey this is really interesting and now we're going to have an instrument that's going to be able to show us stuff that we haven't seen before so i think it just really gets people's interest going yeah good so bob do you have a little committee that besides yourself trying to get this going through uh well I have thus far, it's sort of been a one person operation. I've been working with the CEO. And, um, and so we've been working together on it and he's been very much behind it. But as, as we're now at the place we are, as I said, I'm going to be uh, getting a group of residents together so we can all work together to uh, uh, keep it operating. Because, you know, uh, you just never know. I mean, I, I'm healthy right now, but, you know, a few years down the line, who knows? So uh, we'll just, you know, get a group of people. And I intend to, I wish a bunch of you guys were around here, you know, I'd have you come in here <laughs> and, and, and uh, operate the scope. Uh, but um, but uh, the nearest uh, astronomy club is it's a good half hour drive away. It's the uh, it's the uh, Phoenix uh, Phoenix Phoenix Astronomical Society PAS, hmm. and uh, so I'm going to be contacting them to see if there's some persons there that might be able to uh, become involved with us. That'd be great. Uh, and then and then we have uh, also ASU uh, near not too far away uh, Arizona State. But I think the amateur route is the best way to go because these are people that will be around. So uh, I have various things I'm working on to, you know, now that it's really moving and we're going to do it, then I'll be working on, you know. Mm -hmm. Good. And then I hope I'll get back and start doing some photography work. I'm just yeah. in a real dry spell, I'll tell you. This is bad, guys. Please do it. I want to <laughs> see more. <laughs> we had such clear nights i started setting up my telescope and then it fogged in again so yeah oh man i tell you well we've had a lot of smoke here from the fires you know oh, yeah. fires all over none of them are in close Arizona. to you i hope yeah. are any of them uh, close to you none of them i hope no no none of them are we're, we're not in in our area here it's so built up that <laughs> it's not close to any bless you we're not close to any uh, any vegetation that would burn and create a big big hazard. So um, where where but, are you at, Bob? What's that? Where are you at? In Tempe? Uh, Scotts in Scottsdale. East Scottsdale. East, okay. Scottsdale. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's Scottsdale's just to the northeast of. Oh. Yeah. 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 And a very nice community. Uh, but, um, it, you know, but it's just, we still get a lot of light pollution here. 
How are well, things are looking? Just down the, the just down the hill from you is ASU down there near, near baseline and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Is, is that where the is that where the <laughs> uh, Astro Society is located? No, the Pasadena I'm Pasadena uh, Finns Astronomical Society Astronomy Society is actually located kind of due west from us. Uh, it's, it's it's a little bit north. Well, it's just the a, a north part of Phoenix. Yeah, okay. the north part of Phoenix. There's another astronomy club down toward uh, ASU, but it's a little further away. Yeah. And then the uh, PAS has been around for a long time. It's a well-established, uh, long-lived group. So Phoenix has got a lot of light. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I mean, you know, down near Tempe, that whole that whole area coming up to, to, to Scottsdale, I mean, there's just... It's all spread out, but the lights yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it is. There's a lot of light. The upside, though, is we have, uh, in terms of lunar and planetary observing and high resolution, anything you're doing high resolution, where the air is much steadier here. We have we have better nights with good seeing than Santa Barbara by far, because we're not dealing with the. Uh, the marine layer coming in and the yeah. different temperature layers that that brings with it. That's great. And, and so our, actually we get some really, really steady air, even though we got a lot of light. So I have to rely on the filters and manipulating my camera and working, but actually you can work around it, work around it reasonably well. I'm surprised at how much I'm able to see with, with using cameras and the, and the scope. So we have, we'll, we'll be plenty able to show people galaxies on the television. You know, we're gonna be using uh, the video cameras and have it projected onto the television in a nearby room. We, I don't know how much we're gonna, we'll probably use through the eyepiece viewing for uh, planets and some bright objects, but any of the faint stuff, we're just, we're gonna use the cameras and uh, show it to them you know, in, in a nearby room. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna use uh, a, a program where we'll be able to, to uh, it's Team Viewer, I don't know if you're familiar with Team Viewer, where you, uh, you take one computer, you have the computer that's getting the image and data from the telescope, and then another computer is in this room, and TeamViewer allows one of the computers to take over the other one. You actually have on your screen what the other computer has. So we'll get we'll get the stuff on the computer by the telescope. The other tel the other uh, uh, computer will be in the room, and I'll just take over the computer where the telescope is, and then we'll project the image uh, onto the television screen. And then everybody can watch it. Nice. Yeah. So it it, it uh, and they can actually if we use one of the the video cameras, they can actually watch the image form on the screen. And they can actually sit there and watch it happen. Now, so Bob, you it, were at one time you were talking about getting wider doors or doors that would open and uh, you'd have uh, wheelchair accessibility into the dome. And is that what you're planning, or do you already have those doors? Yeah, we're getting we're getting uh, uh, the home dome, the the ten foot diameter uh, unit. It's called Pro Dome, actually. Hmm. It's made by Home Dome. It's called Pro Dome. It's a ten foot diameter. And what happens is that the there's a door from from walk in level up, probably about. I don't know, two feet or so. And then you turn the, the dome around so the slot is over the door and then you open up the door and then the slot and the door allow you to enter standing up. And it's, it's the only small observatory where that's possible. Otherwise you're oh. squatting down and walking under, having to squeeze under and get in. 
or you bump your head. <clears throat> so, um, so the, 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 the prodome will allow you to have walkers, but not wheelchairs. People, oh. in, wheel, wheel, people in wheelchairs will, will do, we'll do stuff for them on the television. We're, we're going to figure out to, how to include everybody. Yeah. So, uh, but we'll probably just use, use the television to show them stuff. Sounds so, like you got everybody covered down there. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> trying. <laughs> and then this, the the uh, and then we're going to have uh, nights for the for the uh, for the employees and their families. And when I announced that we were going to do that, all the residents clapped because <laughs> they really they really want to. Uh, yeah, there it is. This is uh, this is exactly the design we're going to get. We'll have the three here and this, and then what happens is this opens up, uh, and and there's a door here. The door opens below, and then the then the and then they open up over over the uh, slot for the telescope, and you can walk in. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, but that, yeah, that's how it'll look. But it'll be brilliant white. Uh, that's, uh, you can get it. And that's, that looks nice out in the desert. It's kind of a sandy color, but ours will be brilliant white to reflect the light. We want it as bright as we can get it to, to uh, reflect the light away, you know. So, you know, the, the good thing about it coming in October, it won't be so damn hot. <laughs> Yeah, Bob. How are you going to handle? <laughs> how are you guys going to handle that heat? You know, from transitioning from the day into your viewing night. I, I know the temperature drops fairly quick there, but uh, is is there something you can kind of do inside the dome, or is it is it uh, is is it going to be insulated fairly well? I I don't understand how you're going to deal with all that heat. Well, what you do is that before before you're going to use the scope, uh, you just go over there and open up, open it up, so that yeah. there's a flow of air back and forth, so that the, the t there's no temperature differential between inside and outside. And yeah, okay. I mean, on these hot evenings, I mean, I've been out there imaging when it's been 95 degrees. Right. You know, <laughs> and it's too uh, it's too hot. I mean, I when it gets this hot. Uh, we we probably I mean we probably won't have things out there if we do anything yeah we'll probably be looking at stuff inside on the television screen you know I could get get it set up so we can project stuff in there uh, so but it's just too hot to be out there I mean yeah in yeah. any case and if you air condition it well then you got a big differential between outside and inside and then you got an issue of different temperature you know, gradients flying in and out the opening, you know, and then you got uh, bad, you create, create your own bad scene. So, yeah. um, so, you know, it just, there's no way getting around it when it's really hot. So uh, there are way, there'll be ways we, we can deal with that. We can probably do a lot more stuff inside. Uh, but uh, yeah, you just, just, you just open it up then let it let it equalize. I what I've heard. Go ahead. I remember days we were down there, and, and you know, I, I used to go down uh, to Phoenix with a group of, of guys. That were, they were they were teachers here in, in Santa Barbara, or or real estate in yeah. real estate. Then we'd go play golf down there. But I mean, I remember waking up and it was just freezing. And right next, this yeah. was March. Good oh, time. Yeah. Of the year. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know the. You know, you'd see snow on the hills next, right next to you, and then yeah. as it approached ten o'clock in the morning, it started cooking. And by two in the yeah. afternoon, it was like sizzling. And then again at night, you it would drop. <clears throat> it may drop again. So you yes. had these really wide, wide temperature uh, uh, gradients. Yeah, but yeah, not always. Not always, but I mean, no, it, was the, but, but you're right. I mean, because we don't have any moderating influence of the ocean. The ocean uh, really moderates the whole climate in Santa Barbara. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. So it, it can't get too hot or too cold. 
No, we don't have that. So yeah, you, that's why you have these big fluctuations. Yeah. But but interestingly, um, at higher atmospheric levels, there is is just generally more steady here. Uh, there's no question in my mind because I've I've been imaging you know high resolution imaging in Santa Barbara and here, and it's definitely better here. Definitely better here. <clears throat> you know so. Uh, but, but, you know, light pollution uh, is worse than Santa Barbara, that's for sure. You know, it's got the worst light pollution. Yeah. So, so that, that, that's the update from here. We'll keep you, keep you informed. I get some photographs. When we get something going, I'll send some photographs. We can look at, look at those. Sounds great. I got a couple of things here. I, I wanted to ask Jerry, you know, we were talking about the ray effects that Antares made in the one image that I had last week yeah. of the mosaic. And uh, I think what you were talking about with the felt or whatever that was, the material that you put inside, that yeah. was for the eye, that was for the two inch, right? The eyepiece adapter. Um, that was those were those felt things with the sticky backs were from Protostar. But okay. I don't think they I don't think they make that anymore. But I put that inside. Um, actually, in that case, it was a one and a quarter inch eyepiece focuser, oh. tube, but not yeah. the eyepiece. I put it in the focuser tube. But I've also yeah. put it, I've also put it in a two inch, and I noticed that it's the same stuff that um, Al, whatever his name is, that runs. Te um, Tell you who. Na no, Nogler, Al Nogler. Oh, oh he, Nagler, yeah. yeah. He puts it inside his telescope tubes. You notice inside your 127 IS, there's no baffles in there. Well, I got this one here. This this is the guy, that, this is the IS adapter right here yeah. that goes to the optical train past that guy right there. Yep. And it looks like it's, what would you call this? It looks like it's kind of like a thread inside there. So I think yep. that's yep. a diffuser. Yep. So yeah, that I shouldn't need to do anything with no, that. No, not, not when it's threaded like that. That's fine. Okay. The thing that the thing that really is hard to do with baffling telescopes or keeping the stray light down is to get the right kind of a black surface inside. And there's a lot of black stuff out there. There's paints and everything, and they all work really well at high angles. But what you need is one thing that Protostars felt did, and that is it had it a uh, it blocked 90% of the light at one degree of um, wow. the incident. So it, wow. it, there was nothing else that came close to that that I know of. Now, some people it's, mix yeah. black paint with sand and you know get a bumpy thing like that, um, but the sand breaks loose and I don't like that kind of grit inside my telescope. So yeah. crushed, Jerry, crushed walnut shells much better. Yeah, well, I don't like anything inside that you that you stick to the inside. To get loose, yeah. yeah it gets loose. The heat cracks yeah. the paint and it starts falling down and stuff. So that's why so, I use that felt. So I it. wonder what it is then. If I've got all this stuff in there, the only thing I could think of, could the filter do something weird? You know? It could be. You, you know, when I, the stray light is a real problem with, real images, or I mean, real instruments for space too. And we have to, we had to track it down to, and sometimes it would come down to just one um, chrome color, chrome plated screw head. That was a minor little screw and the light hits it right and the whole place lights up inside. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> because the filter, I mean, there's only one way this thing can really go together. This is the actual, yeah, this is this is the assembly that goes beyond that guy right there. Yeah. That, that that's got the adapter for the camera mm -hmm. right there. So I yeah. just can't. I can't quite. When I would do some experiments, <laughs> take pictures of it, take redo your picture with the right exposure to capture that ray system, and then move. Uh, what was it? The star was Regulus or Antares. Antares. Yeah. And move Antares to different places in the field of view. Yeah, there you and go. See if the rays collapse to always focus on Antares. So yeah. you know, that'll help us figure it out. Yeah. 
And then I did this, which came out pretty good. I don't know if you can see it very well, but that's the image right there. I got part of it right there. It's like about a 20 by 30. And it yeah. came out pretty good. I yeah. did that down at Walmart. I put it in the queue system down there and it was about over a 350 megabyte tip. Yeah. Just ate it. Just Nick, no problem. Yeah, Nick, can you show that again? Yeah, I can. Let me try to get... Let me try to see if I can get away from it a little bit more. Can you see it? There's a yeah. lot of reflections. There's yeah. too much reflected light. Um, I guess it's actually probably better to just show the image. Yeah, that would do and good. Then, and then I'll show that, and then, and then you can see it. But it really came out good. I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe the colors that they got. So it was really um, pretty impressive. I like those photos that you see on the walls of restaurants where they're they're made on metal sheets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The painting on metal. Yeah, you know, I tried that. I've got I've got one of the North American done that way, but I don't like it because uh, they they go J they want JPEG, they won't do TIFF. So this is all TIFF right here, and I was able to put that in. Yeah. And this is a four panel mosaic. In case you guys are wondering what what happened here using the NP-127IS, uh, seven minute exposures at ISO 800 with a moon, beta moon sky glow filter on it. And I spent about two nights on each of the, of the panels that went one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. And I found yeah, some kind of, this is the ray effect that I'm talking about. Yeah. As far as you can see it right here. Yeah, those rays are, those rays are dark. Hmm. So the thinnest part of them is dark. So mm -hmm. did you use a flat field and a, what is the other one? I used a, I large. used the large field corrector. Yeah. No, and I, I used a filter, a 48 millimeter uh, filter adapter. For your flat field? Uh, for the field flatteners built into the scope, right? No, but you no. I'm talking about the picture, the flat field picture, okay. where you make, you're looking for um, donut rings and stuff, shadows. Oh, I didn't did get you just anything. take the? Did you just take the image and process that, or did you use a bias frame and a flat frame? Yeah, I did all that. I used bias frame. flats and okay. uh, you know the whole nine yards yeah. darks. Yeah, go, I did. Go, go back to the bias frame. And see if you have bright streaks in the buy in the flat frame, that it might be overcorrecting because these are darks. It's where you subtracted some of the image out. Ah. So huh. that that might give a hint also. Yeah. If you find any structure like that in e okay. any of those frames. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it this was not a slam dunk, guys. Uh, as I was telling the other guys last week, it it, it was not easy. Oh. And what I found was, uh there was a couple of things that that when i put this thing together that i had to kind of figure out but one one thing that really came to mind was this panel down here this fourth panel there's a program where what it does is it allows you to have a target panel and then a, as a reference panel and then yeah. and then a target where you're going to and what it does is it tries to equalize the backgrounds between those two yeah and what I found is the darkest panels work the best. So what I had to do is work my way through, get this panel to equalize itself to this guy, and then get this panel to equalize to that, and then work my way through the whole thing. You can imagine, I mean, it, just to figure that out was, was a son of a gun. The other thing that I had trouble with is the overlap is 30, about 30%. Okay, and so what it has to do is do a star match uh, in that overlap field between the two panels to decide how to merge and align those two guys. This one dark panel right down here, ha I had I tried for an hour and a half to get this thing to work. And what I ended up finally figuring out was that there's an automatic way of doing it and then it's iteratively. So I, I looked at the thing and I went and I went, I think I had like thousands of iterations through the same. Finally, I went down and I looked at the display and it said it found like over 24 or 25,000 stars in the overlap. And I thought, well, shoot, it should be able to do that. So I ended up putting 50,000 stars in there.
you know, instead of you think like maybe if you put one or two in their stars in there, that it would be really easy for it to do. But that's not the way that this thing works. Huh. It's looking at, it's looking, uh, it, it, it's doing it some other way. So when I put 50,000 in there, the thing worked. That was about an hour and a half work to, to, to figure that thing out. I had to get a script mm -hmm. to do the background equalization. That's a, that is not part of the regular library. So that was kind of a pain, but. So what Dick, I'm working, I'm sorry. Dick, did this, this is Pix Insight you're working with? Pix Insight, yes, yes. That's the program that I do use to do it. So, you know, basically the process is pretty simple. Uh, when you look at it, um, what you're trying to do is uh, you take your four panels and you put them through this one algorithm and you take one panel, let's say you start with panel one and then you want to see where panel two is. Okay, and then what it does is it creates a template and you work your way through, first, first you do panel one against panel two, and then it gives you an image with two of those panels overlaid, one panel overlaid on top of the other one. Then you use those two panels to get the third panel aligned to those, and then you do the fourth. So once you have that template, then what you have to do is create individual images with the plates in where they're supposed to be. So plate one would be here and then there'd be black all around it. And then plate two would be here and there'd be black all around that, see? So, and then you get your four different plates right there and then you put them into this thing, it's called uh, merge mosaic, uh, something like that, where, where you put, and you just put the files into this thing right there and then it goes through and does all computation you've got a couple of parameters that you can change and one of them is known as feathering and the other one is shrink I didn't use shrink but feathering what feathering does is it gets rid of a problem known as pinching I'll show you what it looks like there's actually still some pinch artifacts on the on the actual drawing I'll show it to you um, I didn't get them all let me see if I can go for one right in here let's see if I yeah, here's a pinch artifact. There's actually a couple pinch artifacts. These are pinch artifacts, okay? And that has to do with how, when it merges these two, let's say two plates together, there's a corner or there's something, an edge there where it does that. And the feathering uh, makes it so that it, the blending is a lot easier for that to do that. So that that's something, but I mean, it's like way in there, you know? So it, it would be one thing that you wouldn't really notice. In, in the image that came out on, on the uh, 20 by 30 that I did, it came out pretty well. So let me show you yeah. something else I'm working yeah. on. Uh, let me see here. What is that glob up there? The glob is uh, M4. Okay, yeah. so, you're, so you're actually near Antares. That is Antares. Yeah, that, that was it's Antares. The, the orangey star in there. That's Antares. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's Antares. So, so what, this cam what camera were you using? Canon uh, 60 MK2. Okay. Yeah, second generation sensor, uh, 26 megapixel sensor. Wow. So mm -hmm. now this right here is just raw data. I haven't done a dang thing to it yet. Okay, but uh, you know, I think Tim, you were asking about the snake. How come nobody does the snake? I think it was you, maybe it was- No, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Or snake or pipe, anyway. This is part of the pipe. The pipe goes, the, it's, there's a, that's a glob right there. And then that's okay. about where the pipe ends. And then the pipe continues, it probably goes on a little further. So what I'm gonna do with this, this is, uh, excuse me, let me backtrack a little bit. This is a Red Cap 51. And I'm doing about seven minute exposures because it's about f4.9 and the, and the MP127 IS is 5.2. So they're pretty similar. This is uh, three, I think it's about uh, three nights so far. I, I, you know, it's been hard to get stuff because it, it, the moon is, is in the way. And what I intend to do is do uh, another panel that is, um, uh, below the bottom of where you see right now and and get the entire pipe nebula because there's still a little bit more there uh yeah. and then the snake is there's the snake you can see the snake right whoops 
I can't pan. There we go. Get it over here a little bit here. Oh yeah. You can see it. I, I'm trying to get it. <laughs> see, I can't. I can't uh, use the mouse to uh, get there. I got. It. And then, and then you guys are in the way. See, so there it is, right there. So the plan plan is a uh, probably just a two panel mosaic is what I'm thinking here. Nothing really, you know, too extravagant. Yeah. Uh, it won't be nearly as hard, I think, as the other one. That that NP one twenty seven IS was was difficult. Now this one here is very much hands on, whereas the other one was shoot from the hip. I mean, I had the camera on there the whole time, and I never even did anything with it. See. So that's kind of shooting from the hip. This one here, I'm, I'm processing everything as I go because I want to make sure I get enough frames. It's not about quantity of, of shots. It's about quality. So I want to make sure that uh, it, it goes well. The center star in this is Theta Obukai. That's that star right there. So uh, what, what, is that, what, what is that again, Dick? The star is yeah. Theta Ophiuchi, because that's what the center of this image is, is, is theta Ophiuchi, that's that star right there. And then the nebula itself is known as the pipe. Now there's some other dark nebula up here too as well. Uh, let's see, uh, this, is, this, this is north to the left, left is north, okay? So I'm gonna be moving this guy east uh, to get the rest of the pipe. And I'll probably be moving to about a, a point where uh, I'm gonna say maybe the Triffid and the Lagoon are just out of the field of view. I don't know if I'll be able to get those guys or not. I think it's gonna be too close. I, 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 don't, think, I don't think I'll be able to cover those guys as well. Look at that yeah. little station, a little asterism right next to the main star in the middle of the picture. Yeah. yeah. See, up at 11 o'clock, there's a little trail of stars of descending yeah. brightness. A perfect now, where are you talking? Light. You're talking about here. Here. And at 11 o'clock, that would be like right in this no, area. No, no. More to the left. More, More to the left. left. Here. Up, uh, up, up and up, to the left. Up, down. No, that, see that double star? Draw a line between the main star. That guy and, there? Yeah, that. See, there's a perfect little arc. That one, and then there's two more stars in the arc. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nice oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Accidental art, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay, that's called uh, Beam's Asterism. Beam's <laughs> Asterism. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Actually, if, if you back off a little bit, I, I saw it even going out further. It, yeah. So it goes way yeah, it's out. Got, it's got yeah, one farther out. like a kite. Oh yeah. Out, right, yeah! There's two bright stars. Goes yeah. Out, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I think that's cool. I, that should that should be beams asterism, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Guy. Okay, tonight's discovery night. <laughs> it's fun anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let me uh, show you. Very that. nice. So, very nice, Dick. Thank you. So, so oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's role you got. Yeah. So I was yeah. interested. It's it says it says in the article that the dark nebula is only five hundred light years away. That's why it blocks. There's hardly any stars there. Uh -huh. It's kind of interesting. Well, that is interesting. Yeah. It's interesting too to see how far that trail actually goes down. Yeah. That, that dark nebula. Now that's a case where if what it looks like the guy has done is superimpose that sky onto uh, a foreground image because there's a, a maybe not. I don't know. Maybe he had that mag much magnification. Show the lake it. again. Show the water. That well, it's got the reflections in the right area and they're both credible. Oh, yeah. He's got that. Jeez, he must have some magnification. That's beautiful. So um, this is not your photo then? Not me. This is this is NASA science uh, website. Okay. Oh, it's pretty gorgeous. Well, that's probably why that dark yeah. nebula goes so far is it's so close. So it looks bigger. Uh -huh. and, and, that, and the stars, of course, are not there because it, it, they're behind the cloud and the cloud blocks mm -hmm. them. Can't see them. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm trying to figure out which way does the Scorpio's tail go. Does it go down here? Or? Yeah, you, it, it would go. It, I would say you want to kind of like take an arc up to uh, from going through the stars, kind of like about there. You know, there's a star kind of like about where that where the the um, M4 is, the globular. You know, and kind of go in, up in an arc that way to the right. So you, that's going to be the arc of the back of the scorpion right there. And so the tail goes actually down further below the picture there. So that picture is probably taken farther up north, I bet. Could be. And Scorpio, get, well, Scorpio getting could, cut off. Could wait till the uh, thing's about to set, too. Yeah, that's true. It could be just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. Just about ready to set. It's such a pretty area, though. Yeah. Very nice. Tim, have you worked on your mirror at all? Did Tim Is disappear? Tim, Tim's still with us. I don't see him. Oh, he's up. No, he took off. Yeah, he's working on the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> You know, one of the things I was thinking, you know, when Hank had that picture of uh, the lagoon, and it was um, it was kind of underexposed. I, I don't mean to be uh, bad mouth among us, but I liked it because what what was really cool about it is you could see the central part of the nebula really well, and and it had a, a much more structure to it than I had realized. And, and yet he didn't have the outer edges so much. So it gave me the idea, I don't know if I'm gonna have time, but I thought, wouldn't it be neat to do uh, maybe a composition on that with some multiple exposures so you could do a little range compression. Not that you really needed it, but I think that it might help pull out some of the detail that's kind of hidden because it's so bright in the center. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you could bring that brightness down, you could probably get a lot more out of the image. I might try that okay. with a 10 inch, yeah. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. No, I don't certainly don't have any to add myself. I have not really pulled out my telescope for, for months here. Oh. And, I came, we're cleaning up our house here and uh, sort of cramming everything into my office, it seems. But um, I found an old set of negatives from when I took started taking pictures in uh, 1960 when I was wow. in high school. And I've got, I've got a macro lens on my camera and a light stage now. So I'm going to take images of the negatives and I'll, I'll have them to show you a few of the things uh, oh, yeah. next week. Yeah. We'll, we'll oh, this is, you've got film day stuff. Yeah. Okay. Got, yeah, you'll all get a laugh out of them. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah. I used to, the first, the first try I made at, um, I think I mentioned this before, but the first try I made at a long-term exposure was the Orion Nebula. And I had a six inch F8 Newtonian that I built. And then a friend gave me a 50 inch, about F10 refractor. And I hooked that up next to it as a guide scope and I made everything spaced so I could lay down on a chaise lounge and look straight because it was a straight through telescope and with crosshairs and stuff. So I'd try to guide that way. But the thing that happens is even though I'm comfortable, I tend to fall asleep. Uh -huh. It's not real exciting and stuff. So some of the pictures I got are hysterical. But anyway, <laughs> so I have some I have some early shots of Jupiter and Saturn and the moon and um, one of the owl nebula that's recognizable. So how, how long some, of an exposure are you talking about? I don't recall. Yeah. Um, the yeah. planetary yeah. stuff was about a 30th of a second and the uh, longer exposure ones, I got a, I got a, an, a, there was a lot of, in 1960, there was a lot of stuff left over from World War II and you get this war surplus stuff. And so I found an, uh, a four inch diameter F6 Aero Tessar four element uh, lens, which is remarkably heavy, but it was made to cover a nine inch by nine inch negative. 
And so I put it, I put a four by five inch sheet film holder at the end of the tube after that and worked out a focusing mechanism. And I'd take pictures with that. Um, it wasn't as highly magnified as with the six inch, so the results don't look as silly. But uh, I got some good shots with that. And one I took of the um, Ursa Major and the, the, the uh, Owl Nebula in there. So I think that was um, probably a five or 10 minute exposure. So well, guys, my, my screen froze and yeah, I've been gone. That. Yeah, I've been gone for the longest time. I have no idea. I may have to leave on my end because something over here isn't working. Okay. Well, but when, uh, I'm, I'm back now. So okay. I see. We, you just disappeared. You didn't know what yeah. happened to you. You know, my son sent me a text, and then I tried sending something back saying I was in a Zoom meeting. He never got the text. And I told him I sent you emails and text, and they all failed. I was <laughs> beginning to think it was something that we said, but. No, <laughs> no, no. no, I mean, it was. Yeah. Dick was um, right in the middle of saying something. And I, I Dick was saying something. I, and I went, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. And, and, and there was just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, can, you, can you show one of the jokes I sent? Sure. You want the latest one you just sent, Einstein? Sure. Yeah. Let's see if I can get that. Uh, I imagine Tom has a bank of displays of uh, monitors. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've got a screen up above here that, uh -huh. but let's see. Here it is, if I can get back to. Are you back home now? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So let's see, share screen. Here's Jerry's latest cartoon here. <laughs> I think he was a bit of a, a, bit of a, a drinker too. <laughs> that's great that's great <laughs> oh i saw that <laughs> one was really weird <laughs> that does look extra <laughs> oh that's the uh focuser the guide guide scope focuser on oh, yeah. uh, yeah. off-axis guider that i have yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, looks very nice. <laughs> lunch. You'll, make, you'll need to Order make that lunch. a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw that one too. I like that. Ordered lunch. <laughs> All right. It said sorry. <laughs> I like Alexa said sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like the uh, I like the Hertz sprung Russell by was it XKCD the yeah. that you had that was that was kind of cool. You know there was a there was an old uh, uh, restaurant where the old Blue Onion was. What was it? Roger Larson's Fig Tree Restaurant. And on Fridays I'd go up there after work, and there would be a lot of people come up there, and they had a shrimp oyster bar and really neat entertainment and I sat down next to some guy and he just started in on me on politics and I just said god you know <laughs> you go to a you'd go to a damn bar just to enjoy yourself a little bit and you sit next to an idiot and I thought to myself well you know what I'm just going to go down the other end of the bar I'll go sit next to that guy over there it looks pretty innocent <laughs> and I, I sat down next to this guy and he immediately started telling me that you can plant anything in your garden a shoe and a shoe will grow. A steak, steak will grow. <laughs> yeah, but what will it grow? I just got up and left. I just said, I'll come back next Friday. It was really weird. <laughs> so There's I, a lot I, of weirdness I, out there, I'll tell you. Yeah, there really is. And I mean, I, I used to, I think I told Gary and these guys at the workshop, I used to go hang out at bars. I go play golf on, on Saturday and Sunday. And then go to a bar and play darts and drink beer. And boy, you meet yeah. <laughs> you meet them all there. You just meet them all. <laughs> one one night, one night we were playing darts and it was raining out. 
and a black kid came in and sat down kind of underneath to one side of the dartboard. I mean, it was a dangerous spot. The guy was holding, he had a hood, a hood on for the rain, and he had this giant knife on his in his belt, and he was holding a pink bunny rabbit. And I thought, fuck, man. And I, just, I, just go, I think it's time to go home. You know? <laughs> So, Tim, is this really uh, happening or did I have too much to drink? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I literally would say, you know, God, I got to stop doing this. We I, have, I, I was up to, you, I'm I gotta sorry. Ask you, I got to ask you guys, has has anyone watched the, the, the 11 a.m. show that Jerry is putting on, that we're putting on at 11 a.m. on Mondays? I, I watch it. Uh, I watch it a lot, a lot. And um, yeah. The, there's a couple of Mondays where I just couldn't do it because I, like this Monday I was out at Costco with my son and then another one we have a sick cat and we had to go to the, the vet and so I just I miss those I just can't can't do it but, but so you, know how to, you can go look at them has, oh I can't has anyone done, has you have you done that on YouTube have you gone to YouTube and look at the shows in the past no I haven't I haven't yeah so that's available you know you click right. on the links on our main webpage, you know, sbau.org, and you can click on yeah. the main picture there, our picture, and click on that, and you can take you to the YouTube page and see all our past videos, including the telescope workshops, if you're trying to remember something that goes on in the workshop. Yeah, so, yeah. I run into people now and then that watch the right. CR podcast, and I looked back on, on YouTube, I looked back at the viewing level, and sometimes we're in the 30s. Now that doesn't count real live watchers. It counts everybody that looks later. Yeah, which huh. is fine. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, I yeah. I like to watch live so I can harass you guys with text. Yeah, call in. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think I can, right? Yeah, you can. No, no. It, Tim has has met made comments, and we've had his we've mentioned his comments on there. But there's like a a twenty twelve to twenty second delay, but. You know, yeah. there's the, there's the YouTube site. Oh, and yeah. You can see oh, yeah. By call in, I don't mean on the phone. I mean just send us a message. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I do that all the time. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Well, our late, latest one has 22 views, which is higher than recently. Oh, wow. So. No, I definitely you know, saw something that was at the 30 level. Yeah, 32 back on. There's 23. Uh, yeah, down on uh, oh, second row, oh, second 32 degree. right there with yeah. Chuck's picture. Yeah, 32. Below that is 23. So I guess we'll probably... show more cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, you know, I, I, I started this to put our meeting. Uh, we had meetings in, back uh, years ago, and I, I'd record the meetings and put the, post those uh, on here. You can see some old meetings. Chuck's a asteroids, uh, occultations, and things. So that's why I, I started this, and now we've turned it into a an archive of our Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. But thousands, thousands of people. I mean, hundreds of people. I mean, tens of people. I mean, <laughs> a few people. <laughs> well, maybe one or two, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> did you did you guys see the latest? Uh, I think it's Sky and Telescope where they had a thing on Arecibo. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, I had, I, 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 I don't know why I missed what happened to it, but it just sounds like one of these cables snapped, and that entire mechanism above it crashed down into the into the the, the uh, dish. But think but, about where they built the thing. They built yeah. it in a jungle, basically. Yeah, and the rainfall is is really, really very, very, very high. So you're you've got kind of like a little bowl depression in here, which you built this thing, and I'm sure they've got drainage and so forth. Well, you know that the whole bowl is made out of a screen; it's not a solid metal bowl. Uh huh. So it doesn't retain anything. But but the I think what happened was oh there it is right there the receiver yeah. is fell into the to the dish. I think was what really yeah started the whole thing from falling apart. It's really yeah. bad. Uh, Tom, can I share a screen? Sure, let me clap, stop this one for now. Okay. 
Okay. Man, that's really, that, that's, that's amazing. The okay. guy that runs the, witnessed the whole thing falling in. Now this one is another, another cartoon from XKCD and it's titled The Other One. And you see every name here is a name of a famous place, but, but it's somewhere else. For example, up oh, in South Dakota, that is, there's yeah. Dallas, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gettysburg, so. Uh -huh. Los Angeles <laughs> and Texas, yeah. yeah. San Diego uh -huh. and all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the type of humor that you get in XKCD. If you haven't discovered it, some of the stuff is really quite good. Some of it's quite boring, but a lot of it's quite good. So it was a physics major that dropped out of college and did Holy crap, it's just Vienna. <laughs> okay. I'm sure there must be Par Paris, Texas, and then there's London, Ontario. Yeah. I like I mountain keep... views in Hawaii. And there, yeah. There's a number oh, of yeah. states. There's a number was... of states that have hell. Hell is a, has a town. Hell, California. Hell, hell, Michigan. And there's Houston, <laughs> Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> mountain good. View, Hawaii. Yeah, that that one got me. <laughs> okay. Um, New York. How do I get out of sharing? Just stop oh, share at the bottom. Or... I don't see it anywhere. If you bring your mouse all the way down, it should pop up and you can say stop share or, or maybe it's no. at the top. I think it's at the top. You want to go at up? The top? Yeah. Okay. Well, something happened. Uh, you got to change the page there. <laughs> it, Let's see. Find your Zoom meeting. You're sharing everything now. I'm lost. <laughs> Let's share your bank account. Yeah. Oops, no, that, not that. I, I can stop it this way. It's up at the top is where you want to hit it. It should be like a little, there you go. There I go. I'm sharing a bunch of okay. photos, Jerry okay. stuff. So. Uh, okay, good. That, and uh, I think it was in the issue of Sky and Telescope just before this one, uh, there's a, a great article about clusters, open clusters and globular clusters. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, what, I, what I'd like to do is I have a lot of photos of clusters, uh, globular and open. So what I'll do is put the, pull those together and I can go through and show you what I've got. They're taken over a period of years, uh, mostly with a DSLR, but some of them count pretty well. So I'll do that, you know, and we can look at, you know, some future meeting here. I'll, I'll put it together and let Tom know when it's ready. That sounds cool. Share, the, share those. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, this is the one that um, we couldn't find for the meeting last yesterday. This one, let me share it. I can find where to share. Oh, share. <laughs> it's the big green thing. Down at the bottom for right. me. It's yeah. Yeah, it's down at the bottom. Share screen. Yeah. Can you see this one? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what what was it? There was a lawyer, a, a lawyer in Texas who who had uh, that video filtering on, and, and like he had a cat's face or something. Is that what happened? I can't. It remember. was a yeah. The cat stepped in front of him, and the the thing put together what looked like him with a cat head. And he uh, was in he was in court, um, you know, talking to a judge. Oh, um, no. The judge got upset. He thought he'd done it on purpose. <laughs> I, I think it's probably a video filter that you can put on you know, there's all sorts of filters on the zoom that you can yeah. add <laughs> like uh, yeah I mean, okay I, so i have a question for you guys my, my test is too bright i i made i used the uh, uh, an equation that or a formula equate <laughs> what did you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go how did you do that <laughs> yeah. 
he took his mask off. <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah. It's the real Tom right there. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. like the Twilight one, Twilight Zone. One. Oh, yeah. I remember like, that. Yeah, the person that's okay. covered up. So, so getting familiar. back seriously, um, <laughs> the, the LED I have is different than the one I was using originally. It's much, it's a, it's a bigger size. It's much You're brighter. talking about your Chester? Yes. And, and uh, Bruce helped me with a formula to put the proper right. resistance into it. Yeah. So you guys were telling me to, to add more resistance. So do I do I just add uh, in parallel just a little bit more of resistance, or can I just touch it to it to see what it'll do, or is that is there a way of doing that so I don't have to solder it on right away? Well, you've got a resistance in parallel right now, right? I think it's in parallel, right? Yeah, I have so a you couple can take another resistor, bend the leads over so it would touch on each side of that resistor and see what happens. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, I, mean, I, I would, I would think you'd put the resistance in series if you're trying to cut will, down the will, voltage. Yeah, that will dim it. Oh, that'll, really? Yeah, it'll cut down the current. Oh. And you know, it, your potentiometer would be a you know variable resistance there, and you and you crank it, crank it up so there's more resistance, and that would uh, dim the amount of voltage going to the light. Yeah. Well, well, what I did, Tom, is this is perfect because this is what I, this is the, uh, this is exactly what I've got on it right now. And, you know, I changed the batteries pack to be four double A's and then the, the, uh, uh, the LED is much bigger than before. The other one was about a quarter inch across. This is about three. Now what, you, what you've got there is you see the black wire goes from the batteries and it goes up to the potentiometer and then it goes over to the red, um, uh, wire goes and through it, the light right goes through the light and it comes down and then it goes through a resistance and then back to the battery now if you add another resistor in parallel with this resistor that will lower the effective resistance of the two of them because they're in parallel and if, so if you turn the potentiometer all the way down to zero then it's current limited because the resistance can't get or the current can't get any lower than what it's got here. So you want to lower the resistance in order to get it down. So, so, so you want more resistance. You want to put another resistor in series or just put a, a, a bigger resistor. OK, OK. What? Try it. I'll do that. I have, I have several that I got from the place out there by the airport. Okay. I'll, just touch them, I'll just touch them to the wires and see what I can do. I haven't yeah, I haven't done a thing on the mirror. I just haven't I haven't done it. I've just been uh, too busy around here. I, I would think you'd put it in series, though the resistance. So, so what do you do? You you just reverse the. You... No, a, a resistor doesn't have any reverse or anything. So it doesn't oh. matter which side you hook up. If you put another resistor in in parallel with that, then the effective of the two resistors is less. And so that will, is it, is the light too bright or too dim? Yes, it's too bright. Too right? Yes. Oh, no. I think those I, LED I think, lights. Yeah, then, then I think Tom's right. You want to put it in series. Series, yeah, yeah. knock it down. So how do I do that? Well, that you're going to have to cut a lead. Or on solder one side. Yeah. Or stick a bigger resistor in there so on side or both sides and put a bigger resistor in. Well, if you put a bigger resistor in in parallel, that'll lower the resistance. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about just replace that resistor with a bigger. Yeah. One. Okay, I'll look I'll look into it. I'll, uh, there's got to be some there's got to be some schematics here that I can I can figure out how to. Okay. Do it. You know, you've yeah. got you've got the four batteries there, which is six volts, right? And or act probably closer to five. These are usually like one point two five volt. Uh, these envelopes. Yeah, are yeah, yeah. Nickel metal yeah, you can pick, pick the one of. The, well, I guess you can't because you got them all in series. The batteries. And, but. And I think usually these photodiodes are like maybe they run at three point three volts or something. Mm -hmm. That's about what the, I think the new one is. Is about three point three. The other ones I had were like. 1.7. Uh, I could look at it right now, but I don't want to drag it all down. So why somehow is it, I get uh, 
why why don't you just put um a piece of something over the front with a pinhole in it that'll cut down the brightness yeah i will um for for reading uh, a knife edge will a pinhole work or, or yeah. does it have to be no. a slit it, either one works okay the slit has to be aligned with the knife edge but the pinhole doesn't okay. you could take a piece of black electricity okay. I have a hole. Yeah. Put a hole in it. I actually, like I actually did my first telescope. I did that exact thing. It would, you know, I made the scope with a guy named uh, Jeremy Schmidt. I think I was telling you guys. And he literally, one night, he just was at the workshop and he just said, You got any electrician's tape? And he just cut a slit in it and mm -hmm. pushed it on the front of the, the LED uh -huh. and it knocked it down. And we actually got much better uh, images of the knife edge when it was real, real low, but you need a really dark room and I just don't have that. So eventually I'll, I'll figure it out. But thanks guys, that's what I need to, that's what I need to do okay, next. Good. Yeah. And I think you can uh, go to, uh, you know, do a web search on, on a six volt LED circuit and they'll show you what the resistance should be, uh, something like that, like, here, I'll show you this one thing here. Stop the share and go to share, share this. Let's see if this is close. That's a nine volt battery. Well, I got a fan here for some reason. I got a LED, photo LED, 330 ohm resistor there. So, it looks like a 330 ohm resistor is what you want to come up with and and let's and, or raise the resistance to cut down the light okay i have or well of course this is nine volt and that's so if you have smaller lower voltage that should five volts and you'd be that would change the amount of current available voltage available at least yeah i'm not sure about i'm i'm, I'm lost i've forgotten how the things work with current going through the LED is can you vary the current in the LED how's that yeah. work uh, I V equals I R uh, yeah. voltage divided by resistance is current so oh well somehow it's got to work <laughs> yeah we did I you know I can always call Bruce again he build it yeah, I'll think about it I'm getting yeah. I'm fuzzy on my memory here yeah, Bruce. Bruce ran me through it, and I put exactly what was supposed to be in there. And uh -huh. you know, I I think I told you guys I had a blue LED, and I I put it in there, and I had, <laughs> I had no resistance, and I put it in there, and it la It was a really pretty blue that lasted like one millisecond. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> blue though. <laughs> it looked great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try that again. Uh, you know, I have notes around here somewhere he, that he gave me. And I'll, figure, I'll figure out. I'm going to try. I'm also going to try and touch a couple of resistors and see what happens. Just touch it to the, to, to the hands and see what it'll do. But it, it, we'll, we'll find out. Remember, remember, you got to put the resistance in series to cut down the, sure. the voltage that is going to dropping across the photodiode. Well, that's what I'm going to have to look up is because, it, you know, you know, I, I'll have to look up the series because it just, you know, when, when you're looking at the, uh, I, I think you just sw switch poles, right? No. No, the diode, the diode has to be reverse bias. Otherwise, it won't do it. It just becomes a conductor. Uh, it won't be a diode. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to, if you want to put another resistor in there, you're going to have to cut the lead somewhere. And then the, those two leads become either side of where that resistor goes. I'm, I'm curious what the uh, resistance the of that potentiometer is. is. What is what is the range of that potentiometer? Oh, oh, it's a good potentiometer. You know, uh, Mike uh, Chibnick gave me that, and it's a really good. I mean, it's several several turns that you. Oh, it's a you wire, use wire, on it. wire wire wire. What yeah. what's the what's the numbers for ohms that is stamped on it? Let me see right now. I'm gonna check it out. 
Uh, I may have to go get loops on this one. Okay. I tried looking at it. I didn't quite there. see it. Can't see yeah. it. It's Can 10K. 10K. Oh, yeah. There it is. 10K. Yeah. Plus okay. minus minus. yeah. That's a lot of resistance. Yeah. Plus or minus five. Yeah, dude, it really is. And it, you know, so, you know, I thought, I thought that was going to be enough. And, and once I put the, once I, I put the proper resist, resistor in there, I thought I could dial it down all the way down. Can you and, back uh, out a no, little bit? It just Tom, so I can move the whole picture. Sorry. I clicked on the right thing. Good. And that's what, what, 130 ohms? Is that what that is? I can't read it. The color code on there. I, I, I can't remember my color codes. Bad boys rape our young girls, but Violet. I think that was 150, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not That's it. I think it's 150. That's the color codes. <laughs> what's yeah. the uh, What's the voltage on those batteries? I think. Uh, I think there, it's it's going to be close to six volts um, altogether, but I think they're not a they're not a. It's not a, uh, it's not a full 1.5 volt battery. Each one. Yeah, they're just yep. less. Okay. The, the, <laughs> the LEDs I have are 3.2 volts, 20 milliamps, 3.2 volts. Okay. And I have other ones that are 2.2 uh, .2 volts, 20 milliamps, they're both 20 milliamps. And as far as the resistors go, I had those stuck in here somewhere. And of course, I didn't write on them. <laughs> uh -huh. I have one larger one, and I could show you here just to give you an, an you know. Hey, hey Tim, Tim can, can you read, the, does it show you the resistance across the LED? Does it say anything about the resistance across LED? Well, there. 20 milliamps, weren't they? 20 milliamps. Well, no, oh, well the resistance. No, the resistance. Resist right. No, I think no. I think you, 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 well, you know diodes, what? diodes don't have a resistance like yeah, that. Yeah, they're nonlinear. Yeah. Nonlinear device. Well, I'm gonna try to give you guys a, a look at this <laughs> again. Well, I'm thinking you if what... you put two of those photodiodes in series, that would cut the voltage in half. I mean they'd share the they both need 3.3 volts and you got six volts av available that should that would cut the light in half if you had two of them in series i would just black electrician's tape yeah put a hole in yeah, it. yeah 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 well, that's... well this i can show you i can show you this here's the let me see if i can let me see the, why don't you get out of that and i'll try and hold this up and see if i can show you maybe not we don't want to we don't want to have too much voltage across as a uh, is uh, LED, so it doesn't burn out. So we got to no. make sure that, that doesn't happen. True. Here, here's a. I don't know if this is going to give you an idea, but here's a here's a resistor I have right here, and I don't. This might be like 250 or something like that. I can't remember what the color codes are, oh. but right. I do have that. I can't really see the colors very well. Red. Hey guys, there, there, there's a joke that's brewing here, I'll tell you. There's a group of electrical engineers trying to figure out what the <laughs> resistance are, the, these ohms, and after they Red's talk, too. Stop, then, he, um, then they put a piece of electrical tape with a hole in it across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Famous yeah. Thing, did it. <laughs> the famous thing that happened at work was we had a conference room full of PhDs in physics. Okay, and red, black, and brown. So that's uh, and two. They couldn't get the zero. projector going. That's about 200 ohms, what we think right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not giving you, a, it's not the best light here. And then the gold is the tolerance, which I think is probably 5%. Yeah, that's a little black better. or brown. That's that's about two hundred. It goes red, dark brown, black, and then yeah. brown, tan, brown, and silver, and then the last one is uh oh, it's gold, not silver. 
yeah. But anyway, yeah. But I, you know, I didn't, I didn't write these down. I went out to that place and bought a bunch of these things and and uh, and 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 just like threw them in a bag. Uh huh. At the time, I remembered exactly what they were, but that was over five minutes ago, so I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got that problem too, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got about three of these guys, so you know, they're, they're, you can see that all you know, the differences in those, but. The, the one that is in line right now, I think it's about 150. And 49, 400, uh, yeah, about 49 ohms is what that one looks like. That's quite a bit less. I thought that I could, you know, I thought that I could just like, you know, put put these things on and see if it made a difference in the, the light, but maybe not. Oh, you got a thing on a resistance of an LED. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's here. He's modeling about 15 ohms on a, uh, of the resistance across the LED. That just it's... doesn't do. It doesn't do anything when I touch touch it to the wires. The you're probably parallel. trying to. You're trying to change the current across the photodiode, maybe. It just doesn't do a thing. Well. Is the, like you said, so it has to be in series. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. you're you're already maxed out. You're you're on the uh, you're past the knee. Okay. On the curve, so the current's just going to go up dramatically from there on until you grow the diode out. This this right here, just to give you an idea, here I'm going to show you this picture here. If you can see this. This take a take a look, uh, Tom. Uh, that that oh now get rid of that. That there is mm. dialed down all the way. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's pretty bright. Yeah, it's very bright. Yeah. Okay, let me let me screen share something for you. Okay. Can you see that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. There's that 300 ohms. That's yeah. This is the, this is the circuit that he's got. It's a very yeah. simple straight through current. There's no connection here. This is just VF is the perfect across the reverse bias LED. So this is the series resistance that was required at 10 milliamps. You need 300 ohms for RS. Oh, okay. And you've got 20 milliamps, which is the maximum your diode will, your diode will take before it blows up. So this okay. would show it at a maximum of about half brightness. So if I if I take this resistor out, put a 300 ohm in there, it would what, it would work is, much better. Is that I don't know how to read the bands. So, the what was the colors on it? I uh, saw. You know, you like know the potential the potentiometer is 10,000 ohms. So yeah, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't get it. No, that that it, it that should be much less than that, I would think, to get some control out of it. I, I'd be interested yeah. in in measuring the the resistance of that potentiometer and see if it's actually well. Uh, let's let's look at that. Ohms. Let's say that you have a voltage of what six volts across the batteries. Yeah, right. And then you go through a six hundred or a ten thousand ohm resistor. So that's what is it? V equals I. R so I is equal to V divided by R, so that's six divided by ten thousand. So that's let's say it's six thousand. So it's six divided by six thousand. So that's one ten to the minus three. So that's one milliamp or one micro no one milliamp. So that's about that's about right. You're in the range of um, five milliamps. So okay. having a 10,000 ohm resistor in here is fine. And then you have a current limiter, which is the, the small mm -hmm. ones. You keep it from blowing up. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah that's that's what the, the, the resistor is doing, right? Yeah. It's, and the, the, so to put a bigger resistor in line, it's not going to do it, right? It's going to make it dimmer. It's going to keep it from blowing. What do you got in there now? That's the question. You want to have? Uh, I think it's 150, Dick. I don't know the colors are That's in that. That's not book. big enough. 
So you run the risk of blowing the thing up. Okay. Well, we went. I went through it with Bruce, and he said, "This is what you need minimum." Oh, and so that okay. that's what I put in there. Okay. So, um, it is from what I'm thinking here is that the uh, I put the resistor between the switch and the LED. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, a simple circuit. It's it goes okay. out from one side of the battery through the resistor through the LED and back to the other side of the battery plus the switch. Okay. Attack. It's a very okay. simple circuit. So. Well, I'm terrible at this stuff. So I guess I'll, what I'm going to call Bruce and ask him for a new value of the resistance to put down. Okay. There, cut it. I'll down. do that. I just I'll, I'll, he he'll know immediately that he's okay. really good at that stuff. He'll just say what What do you want? A a, a dimmer light? And I, yes. There you I go. Do. That this is exactly the same thing. Exactly right. And when this goes down to zero, the potentiometer goes down to zero, then the only thing left is that small resistor. Which is your current limit, yeah. That's your current limit. So, and that's gonna be maximum brightness. So you wanna have maximum dimness is when this, the arrow points down to the high end of the potentiometer. So you wanna put another resistor in series with the LED or um, get a potentiometer that goes to a bigger value. There must be something that shows us exactly the circuit here. 390 ohm resistor, LED, six volt battery, but yeah. this doesn't show a potentiometer. No. No, Maybe that's just the limiter. That's that's running it at, let's say, the maximum. Full more. Yeah. Okay, well, this discussion will go on. I'll work on it and have an opinion next week. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, I so. appreciate it, guys. I'm I'm terrible at electricity. See you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay. Right. Adios. All right, totally good. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Okay. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.